Right. So um, what I did was that I, I started looking at doing coaching more full time, uh, you know, as, as we rang up 1,500 women and we said, how are you doing? They said, our lives really suck. Thank you for, for asking, <laughs> you know, and I was like, God, what do we do? How do we help these women that have been with us on the journey through NOSH? And so that's where we came from. Then um, we developed coaching and that was all going really well. Then I got long, I got COVID last year in January. At the end of January, I got COVID very badly. Um, and I was in bed for a couple of weeks and I came out and I couldn't work. And I'd gone from four CrossFit sessions a week and va va boom to shit, I, can't, I can barely walk. And I, you know, and I, I spent a lot of time in public eye. So I was on stage and I had no idea what the last word I had said was. So my brain fog was terrible. I put on- I'll just log in something, if that's okay. Sorry, just a reminder, anyone that's coming in, please make sure you're on mute. Go ahead. Um, and so it was a really painful time. And, um, and I was still having to run a business and pay bills and I'm an entrepreneur like many of you. So there was just, there wasn't anybody looking after me if I wasn't looking after me. So I had been on TikTok for two years and I went on TikTok and I posted little videos of my, cat and you know whatever because i knew i had to be on do something with tiktok but i didn't know what was going to work so i did my cat i think i posted like a photo of something and i had like 20 people look at this and i was like why am i on here i'm not making money out of this this is terrible and i'm shit at it so <laughs> that's why i'm not going to do this because i'm apparently really crap at it so i gave up and then when i got long COVID and all this i went into perimenopause and um, my, my whole life just suddenly changed. Nothing I knew worked anymore because I'm a health expert and I couldn't lose weight. I couldn't think, I couldn't do anything. And so I went on TikTok and I said, oh, I'm dying. COVID gave me perimenopause and my brain doesn't work and I'm struggling and I hate my body and I hate myself. Does anybody resonate? And like 20,000 women went, oh, hell yes. I was like, oh, okay, what the hell do I do with this? So that's how the journey uh, into to TikTok started. Um, and because I'm essentially a marketer, I was like, I wonder how you make money out of this. <laughs> but so I came, so that's, that's what I do. So I'm a full-time coach now, and I run a coaching business as opposed to being a coach. And I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm to everyone's rabid surprise, I'm a TikToker. I, mine too. What would you ever have thought you could add that to your repertoire? <laughs> I, you what, I, like, I dropped my car off at the garage this morning, and the man's like, "You know, I watch your TikToks." I was like, "What do you mean?" And he's like, "Yeah, no, no, I watch your TikToks. I, I'm, I'm absolutely gobsmacked at the fact that people, my one of my daughter's best friends, her elder sister, watches." my TikToks and I, I don't I really don't quite get it but I'm never I'm not it's not going to stop me making money on it I just don't get it so we're just going to have to go with that well I wonder Gita if we can ask everyone who's joined us just maybe to um in the comments just kind of drop are you on TikTok already yeah, that would be super helpful it's struggling with engagement or are you wanting to get started, but you really don't know where? Because I think it would just give us an idea of where everybody is at. And also, are you struggling with, with content or is it all just too intimidating? So Karina's saying, yes, I'm on there. Um, okay, I have an account, but I only observe wanting to get started, but don't know where. Okay, that's great. It's good to know. So it looks like many of us, if we're not kind of testing out already, we're we're hanging around on the sidelines. We're watching, but we're not posting. Okay, just getting started. Brilliant. Because one of the reasons that I had asked you to do this session today, Gita, and I'll kind of start with my vulnerability, because I think it's really interesting that your journey on TikTok started with you being vulnerable, right? Where you said, Hey, everybody, anyone out there, this is where I'm at. Does anyone else feel the same? And it's been really interesting. You and I were having a chat before this, this conversation, and I think it might surprise everyone when we start talking about content, about what you really feel and what you've experienced works. But I think for many of us, we know we need to be on TikTok. We've been told by somebody 
that it would be brilliant for our business, but we don't know if our audience is on there. We, if they are, we don't know what we should be saying to them or what kind of content we should be producing. And I guess whether or not our niche is something that's going to be of interest to a TikTok audience, which I think many of us assume is still really young people, but clearly, you know, gathering from everybody's comments here, we're all on there. So maybe we should kind of, I don't know, where would you like to start, Gita? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, I would like to, I'm, I'm not an influencer, right? I have 65,000 followers. And so that's nowhere near being, you know, there are people, I'm like a minnow in, in TikTok terms, but I make a shit ton of money off TikTok. So if that's your goal, then this should be interesting because I don't want to be in it. I, mean, I don't get fame from TikTok as it were. I, I, I get up and going on TV. So for me, TikTok is literally, how do I make money on it? Um, and so that just to make that clear. Um, the second thing is, I would like to say when we start this conversation, that the reason I feel comfortable having this conversation is I have spent a lot of money on TikTok experts. I paid one woman $2,500 for an hour and a half. Right. She had a hundred and something thousand. And I was like, oh, my God, you have got to know more than I do. And then there was another woman who I paid whatever it was three, three thousand to join her coaching group for a year or something. And honestly, I had more followers by the end of it than the woman who I was paying for her coaching group for a year. So that was I was like, can I have my money back? <laughs> she went, no, you can't. I was like, can you get more bloody followers then? So I just wanted to, to understand that the real power in TikTok is to understand your version of TikTok, okay? So uh, you can absolutely ask questions along the way because I'm super, I'm super comfortable with that. But let me take you through, I kind of broke it down while we were talking with Michelle into four different kind of categories um, so that we could have a conversation about audience content, niching, and also social media kind of overview. So we'd kind of cover all the, all the, the highlights, right, Michelle? Yeah, yeah, that's great. But I think equally, as you were saying, Gita, that if, if anyone has a specific question or there's a specific element that they're struggling with it, feel feel free to pop it in the chat and we can, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be answered across those pillars. But if not, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So the thing to understand is that TikTok is the fastest growing platform in the world. It's the fastest growing platform in the world. It's a, It just is. So if you think your people aren't on TikTok, that's because you're not on TikTok or you're delusional or you're not approaching it the right way or something, you know, just, just understand. Like, so for me, the reason I went on TikTok is Gary V said the fastest growing demographic on TikTok was 35 to 55 year olds. And if I hadn't heard him say that, I wouldn't have actually thought about it. So I, I'm here to tell you, let me be your Gary V. Your audience is 1 million percent on TikTok. Because a lot of people use TikTok as a resource management thing. So if I go on Instagram, it's because I want to see pretty pictures. If I want to learn something, see something, hit something, and I don't want to be on Twitter, then I am on TikTok. And it almost doesn't matter how old I am, but Twitter is like a, a very narrow niche kind of place to be, whereas TikTok is a huge place to be, which spends a huge amount of money learning who you are, learning what you want, and then the algorithm delivers constantly. And I've spent, I, I went, I, I've met like the head of TikTok Europe, the head of TikTok UK, and I spent time because they're really nice people, but I've spent time with them and they, they bear this out. There is every demo there's there's kind of like a whole pensioners on tiktok thing you know and my mother is 89 she's like will you tell me i'm like god instagram took me a year to teach her so we're not putting my mother on tiktok but but you know so there's a place where you want to understand that your audience is on tiktok now let's just assume your audience is on tiktok the thing to do if we were going to break down in terms of audience is to find out where you TikTok has a for you page, right? It has the, the hashtag FYP. So when TikTok posts you on your for you page, then what it does is it feeds your content to everybody as they're scrolling on TikTok. So the goal in theory is to get on the for you page. I've never really given too much of a shit about it because TikTok has some very funky algorithms no one knows anything about. So you don't know how, it's like when you pay someone to get Instagram views or something and you get 50,000 followers and four people look at your photos. That tends to happen there. So, so I would like you to not get hung up on the hype around 
I'm going to get you on the For You page. TikTok will pick you up if your engagement is high or people are interested in you, they'll put you on the For You page. So that's the first thing. When you see hashtag FYP, that's the first thing to kind of uh, understand. I'm being really basic. You have to forgive me just because I didn't know these things. So let me tell you the things that I didn't know. So your For You page is where you want to end up because it will push you out to a lot of accounts. But also if you're going to be targeted, you don't have to be on a lot of accounts. Like I don't, I make between four and five figures a week from TikTok. And I make that with 65,000 people on my audience. I don't need to get to 100 or a million people following me because it, this is relevant, right? I'm making money from where I am now. So I want you to understand that firstly, you don't have to follow a particular you know, formula. Secondly, it almost doesn't matter how many people follow you as long as it's the right people following you. If you are talking to your audience, TikTok is massively engaging. So if you're struggling with things like engagement stuff, you're not quite in your pure audience. You're too broad. You're talking to too many people. People don't understand what you're doing there or they don't understand what you're supporting, right? So it's clear you, you need to, one of the things I'll come down to when we get to niching is for you to understand that TikTok is really based on emotion. It's, I don't know if any of you have seen um, uh, my, my TikTok at all, but I sometimes wear makeup. I sometimes don't. I have an, my entire setup is a little ring light thingy there with the lapel mic. That's the whole of my setup. I don't do anything more than that, right? I just stick my phone up. I put a lapel mic in because some idiot's going to be drilling outside my door, guaranteed. And I want the sound clarity. The really what everyone cares about is the sound and that they can see your face. So if you look at my TikTok, it's a whole bunch of my face. Again and again, if you don't like my face, I really feel for you, but you know, go do something else. But that's literally what my TikTok is. I don't dance. I don't sing because people would put me in jail. I don't do anything funky to get attention because I don't use that. What I do use is emotion. Is this making sense? Yeah, absolutely. And Gita, actually, it would be worth asking you now um, because I'm sure other people are wondering about this. What's your time commitment? Because you were talking about your setup and I think that's really great to hear that you don't have, you know, kind of all special microphones and lighting and whatever, because I think that's something that also overwhelms people when they think about the tech side of that. But how much time do you invest on a weekly basis? You know, it really depends. Um, I, I Because I had long COVID for last year, so it took me a long time to come out of that. So I work very differently now than I would have done a couple of years ago. Um, and so I probably record five to seven videos in a week and each video is 30 seconds to a minute. So I don't know, like an hour, half an hour when I put on makeup, my hair is looking really nice. <laughs> I'm like, that tends to be my criteria or when I get pissed off. Right. When I'm in a place where I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. We're definitely talking about this. Then I'll go and make a video and I'll upload it. OK, so we'll get into the technicals of the who and the team, and because I'm sure we want to know that. But a content creation, I will spend about an, an, an hour in a week. There are people that will spend four to five hours in a week and I'll spend an hour in a week. As I said, I want to make money out of TikTok. I don't want to build a following. The building of the following, it comes, uh, you know, as, 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 as it comes. So um, there is no reason to spend a huge amount of time creating content. In fact, I spend more time on Instagram with content because it annoys me so much that I have to look cute on Instagram, whereas on TikTok, nobody gives a shit. So there's a place I can go on TikTok and just do whatever I'm doing. Whereas if I'm on Instagram, I feel like it has to look prettier. It, does that make sense? And well, it would be a good time to ask this question. Somebody's asked, Ganesh has asked, why would you use TikTok over YouTube? It's instant. Um, my results on TikTok are instant. I have been on YouTube and I have been on frigging TV and I have been, I, yeah, I've run a pot, I've done so much crap and I don't understand. The YouTube algorithm just takes time and effort and I, it needs to kind of be your primary platform. So to be fair, I do my TikTok, I shove it into a repurposing software and strip it of, of watermarks and then somebody goes and puts it on YouTube for me. So I make one piece of content and I use it everywhere I humanly can. And I've trained my team to do that, if that makes sense, right? <laughs> so, so I don't make one piece of content for each thing because I, don't, I will never do that. Spend four minutes with me and you'll know I'm, I will never do that. So I make one piece of content and then I take that content, I repurpose it as a reel, we'll stick a bit out and shove it as a post, we'll take a bit out, we'll put it in YouTube shorts, 
Um, and when I grow up, somebody will make that into a LinkedIn post. I haven't quite done that yet, but that's my next goal. And so I just shove it everywhere. Oh, I put it on Pinterest. I put it everywhere I can using repurpose.io. So I never have to look at it again. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Amazing. So I have never made money off YouTube ever. And, I, and it is, let's go back to this is for business. Yes, I run this for my business. If I'm not making money off it, I'm not doing it. Brilliant. I hope that it answers everyone's question. I mean, I think on the audience side of things, we've established our audiences, whether we like it or not. Are there. Are now, so to find your audience, just, just a little admin -y thing, go in and find the videos that you people, find what, niches what is interesting for your people this is just a very basic piece of work right find your avatar find out what they're watching on tiktok find out who's delivering that content on tiktok find out which of their content is doing really well and then have an understanding of which of that content you are prepared to do so i didn't care if you were dancing on tiktok i was never going to do that although i love dancing that's not who i was going to be on tiktok i'm really clear about my persona on tiktok i am a very a uh, foul mouth, sweary individual. And, and that is entirely who I am on TikTok. Like I don't do that on TV and on Instagram, it's like I went to Mykonos or whatever it was for a week, but on TikTok, I am 100% that version of that, that version of me, if, that may, if that's clear. I see Sarah's asked a question here about how you how you make money from TikTok exactly. I don't know if you want to answer that now. Can we do that at the end? We've got we'll get to we'll get to that. Just assume yeah. that. Okay, so how often do I need to post to ensure it's irrelevant how often you post, it's relevant what you post. Because I will post some weeks every day and some I try and then I can't do it and look something gets happens or whatever, or I'll send it off to somebody and get them to upload it. I'll do five videos and send it to one of the team and say, can you upload it with the, you know, the, the right tags and everything. But you're, it's literally, yes, everybody tells you frequency, but honestly, it's the content that makes a difference. It's what you're saying, not how often you're saying it. Unless you're taking some really, like if I pick my deep niche and say 15 different ways, it would massively increase engagement. But like sometimes I, I will and sometimes I won't. So Gita, I have two questions. One you mentioned, find out what your audience is watching on TikTok. Um, how do we do that? Would that be through surveying our no, existing no. client bases? On TikTok. Go into TikTok and, and put in like my say, for example, say, to be fair, I never did this because I didn't know this. And I kind of did it a bit later on and thought, fuck it. So I, I actually it was my videos that got me started, not this. But this is a really good exercise to do. So somebody in my team did it. So I've never done this. I just want to be very honest. But when you are worried about TikTok and you're not sure what to do, it gives you some comfort to put in your because what they've done now is TikTok is using um, the, the content searches as SEO, right? So I'll go into Google and search a term. I'll put that into TikTok and then they'll pull up all my videos in that niche. And then I'll look at all the content creators in that niche and I'll see who has the highest engagement engagement and the, and the highest views because I want both. Okay. Not just the views because the views is a vanity metric, right? So it's really engagement you care about. Um, and so then those are the people, then I'll look at like in, in, in perimenopause, there's a woman who goes around talking, always wearing a size of clothing too small. And she goes around talking about how hard her life is and how terrible it is and that she's too fat and never, I'm never doing that. That's just not my persona. You know, I'm, I'm never doing that. So I look at her and I think good for you. And then I move on doing something else. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the yes, other so question you mentioned. Comments. It's likes and comments, likes, comments, and shares, likes, comments, and saves. Okay. And is that visible to any, to, that's visible to a user when they're looking at somebody's account? Yeah, because when you look at your, if you guys open TikTok on your phone, if any of you have it, um, I have a new phone, so nothing's moved over. So that's super helpful. Um, hang on. I should have linked my phone to this and then it would have been an easier. Let me take down my voice. <laughs> I need to take the sound down. In the meantime, if anyone else has got questions, feel free to pop them in there. So when you go, 
into any video, right? Underneath the one is the number of views that you have for any video. That's going to tell you like that's got 1.8, that's got 700,000 odd. Let's pick one with less. This is about 1,500. Can you see these bits down the side? Yeah. It's likes, comments, saves, and forwards. Those are the metrics that you really care about. Okay. And those are the metrics TikTok cares about. So yeah, so what we will do is pick high engagement videos. And if I've been lazy and not made one, somebody from my team will come in and pick an old one and shove it up and bitch at me about not making more videos. Okay. Yeah. So we've had um, someone's asked, how do you go from zero to a thousand on TikTok and Instagram? We just started out and we aren't getting any likes or followers. It's the same as Ngozi says on the next night. So people say, don't give away free value, for example. What's the best way you get sales? So it's those are the same question. So if you cared about the things I was talking about, what I'm doing is giving you as much value as you humanly want. I'm telling you the problem, I'm telling you the solution, and I'm telling you what to do about it. I'm also telling you that you can come to me to find out more. Does that make sense? You can never give too much value. Anyone who says I'm hiding the good stuff for later, you're doing yourself a disservice. You have 30 to 60 seconds. How much value can you give in 30 to 60 seconds that you don't have more to give later? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So don't worry about that at all. You want to, so I wrote for this, this conversation, I, in terms of content, I wrote voice viewpoint and value benefit because, um, if you're going to tap those in here, yeah, voice viewpoint and value benefit. Number one, you if you're not getting views on TikTok, you're not saying what you need to say in the right voice, giving the right value, um, and, and with a distinct viewpoint. Sorry, that sounds really irritating, but does that make clear? You're not saying that in the right way when you say something that is absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's voice, value, and viewpoint. So women are very bad and companies are very scared to be controversial. But controversy is not a bad thing. So I'm known for being brutally blunt. And that's fine. I, I'm happy. You've got to be happy with who you are going to be and the persona of you. Like I have a client who goes on as a frigging blueberry um, you should see a Jessica Lanyadu, she's a client of mine, and she literally speaks through a blueberry. I have no idea why she does that. Chick makes hundreds of thousands of pounds off this shit. She should be a blueberry if it makes her happy. <laughs> I don't want to be a blueberry. I'm never going to do that, right? But you want to be really clear that if you are not getting someone to listen to you, you have not niched down enough for your audience to believe you, find you, value you, and trust you. If you're struggling perimenopause and you go on my TikTok, you 1 million percent know I'm on your side and you want me in your doctor's appointment. Does that make sense to you guys? So who are you to that? Why are you not that person to your audience? Wow. So is a big part of this really being comfortable with putting ourselves out there? Yes. But a big part of this is, is so I co coach a lot of women CEOs, um, I mean the odd man, but really women CEOs. And the thing that I find again and again and again is women tend to be very successful, but hide their inner personal selves. As you will hear from me, I don't hide my inner personal self. I'm not up here bleeding my heart at you because that's annoying because this is not fucking therapy. But what I am doing is the stuff I've worked on, the places where I'm kind, I'm comfortable, and this is my voice, I'm using that voice to have a conversation for what it is that I do. Is, is that clear? Mm -hmm. And actually, this leads me to the next question I was going to ask us. Zoe has asked this, um, and they have a candle brand. So how do you utilize this to, to market a product or a brand? So let me ask you back the conversation, Zoe. What is the emotion around your product? Ultimately, this is the thing I've found about TikTok. TikTok is so ruthless and relentless, it forced me to up my marketing across every single freaking platform. Because if you can't be heard on TikTok, the lesson for you to learn is go back and understand your marketing voice better. 
it's really telling you something because it's a crowded marketplace, babe. Who are you not being heard by? Because you've got, you're not saying the right stuff. So if you're selling a candle, do I care if you have a candle? No. But does your candle make me happy, feel luxurious when I can't afford something? Really, apparently people need candles. People keep giving me candles. I don't know why, but, but the, the, my kids come and steal them because I'm not a candle person. But I got a huge box of Joe Malone candles. And you know this stuff was really expensive because it was my birthday last week. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow. So there was a place where there was a love in that candle. Huge amounts of love. Somebody wanted me to think beautiful thoughts and smell great things. And it's not their fault that I, you know, I'm sensitive, sens smell sensitive. So whether it's a brand, and so, so I'll tell you how this is not, I, I'm not an individual, huh? just so we should be clear. I'm not an individual. I'm talking to you as an individual. I'm a brand. I'm very clearly a brand that makes a shit ton of money. That's my job. I just happen to be facing up and that's what my TikTok is. If my TikTok feels to you I'm a person, then my job is winning. But I'm very clearly a brand. So I used to represent Nosh Detox before and I would come out as Nosh Detox. Now I represent GSR coaching as well as that and that's how I come out. I mean, I'm not gonna say that, but I do understand that if you're trying to sell a candle, who wants to buy your candle? What is she or he doing with that candle? Is he gifting the candle? Is he showing the candle? What's the clever thing? Why do you candle made? Who makes your candle? Why is your candle beautiful and amazing? What made you in a market of lots of candles decide to make your candle? That's what I give a shit about. I don't care about your candle as, as such. Does that make, is everyone gonna hate me at the end of this or is this helpful? <laughs> um, no, I think it's very helpful because it, it is a, it's a burning question, right? And I guess what follows on from that is as a business, is this something that we as founders need to be doing or ultimately is it something that team members can do like how do you manage that when you want to have a really strong presence on tiktok so will you hold, hold that thought and then remind my perimenopausal brain you just said that okay um, yeah think about the candles where's the controversy in candles no no so where's the controversy in candles Where's all the politics in candles? Where's the irritation and the bad stuff in candles? Because when you can find that, talk about that on TikTok. Talk about why you made a candle because other people put that horrendous stuff in candles and your candle doesn't smell bad and create bad. There's a thing, right? Around can I'm not a candle expert, but you know what I mean? Where's your controversy in candles? Where are you the good, decent people that make beautiful, amazing candles? Go there, that's an emotion. Hmm. No, I think that's I think that's great advice. And also, you know, in general, we underestimate how powerful how powerful our individual stories are, because ultimately our brands and our businesses always start with us. And yeah, we so underestimate so how how fascinating people might find, or how inspirational or compelling people might find the story behind a brand. It's one of the things I love most about the women's chapter is is the stories behind the people and the businesses. When I use a product, I'm using that product or buying that product for a reason, right? So if, if, I'm, if you look at when I've just bought Fenty uh, Foundation, something or the other, um, and when I bought it, it said the reason Rihanna loved this product. Rihanna probably doesn't even know the goddamn product exists. What are we doing by saying why Rihanna loved this product is we're connecting the product to a person that we attribute emotions to, yes? So that's what you always wanna do. You're not selling a pen. You're selling what I'm gonna do with that pen and why this pen is perfect for me to do it with. So again, as I say, I'm a marketer, so I can do that to chickens, but that's your job, right? That's what it's, it's about. Um, sorry, you were asking me something. Hang on, shall I just answer some of these questions? Do you need to focus yes. on ads? I've never taken a single ad on TikTok ever. Um, I put an ad, or I used to use ads on Instagram, but it was because I was trying to grow my Instagram account before I met TikTok. And then I ignored Instagram completely. Um, should you show your products and use as a brand? Yes, you should. You should show your products and use as a brand. You should show other people using your products. You should ask the people that are buying for you to tell you why are they using it as a brand? What is it that they made them choose your brand? Where are they using it? Are they using it in a bedroom? Are they using it in a bathroom? Are they using it at a romantic candle dinner? 
So that's what you should do. Um, how can you start making sales once you've got all of this aligned? Um, I didn't know you could make sales on TikTok because no one had had this conversation with me, right? So I went on TikTok at the end of January. I hit huge controversy, which was really helpful um, around April, May. And so my account grew very quickly. And then I started making money around June, May. I kind of was like money, there must be money in this. So I started testing how I'd make money. Um, so it didn't take very long, it took a few months. Um, but we're very focused on, on how we could make money. So it was easier for us. Um, Michelle, you asked me a question and I said something else. What was it you were asking me? Um, I can't remember. I'm interested to know about the controversy piece. I mean, how... how con <laughs> no stranger to controversy is Gita. So. No, it turns out by breathing, I can be controversial. Um, so I was outrageous enough to put up a, a piece of um, uh, on a content which said that women's weight loss does not work the same as men's and that um, women's hormones don't work the same as men and that unless you are a 24 year old personal trainer do not be telling a 40 year old perimenopausal woman what to do with her body because it doesn't work and what it does is it makes women feel a lack of confidence it makes them feel insecure and it makes them hate themselves so they feel undisciplined and they're actually being fed a crock of shit because what we have is a thing called stress fat and actually if we manage our stress we will manage our fat better and then um I, tr I literally trended on TikTok over, we got 10,000 views about every five to 10 minutes. Um, and it just started doing this. And I was like, oh, and then, then all the bully boys came on and all the men started to attack because they said I was talking crap because it was, you know, then I got stitched by a very famous doctor who debunks everything and he debunked the crap out of me. Um, and so, you know, that, that was interesting. Um, and then what I did is I, ex-lawyer so I went and I found all the scientific data and created a piece called here's voice from dirt technique here's the science behind the thing and put that up and about four people watched it so that took a lot longer to, to climb because nobody cared about the truth but you know the controversy was really helpful it really pushed my account out and it got me on TikTok's uh, platform they they started to notice me after that and then my engagement went up um, as a result of that but to be fair you you know you don't need that there there are lots of people that have followers that have never created controversy but they will have controversial opinions i just happen to trend for that controversy and if you're going to trend for a controversy you may as well make money out of it right <laughs> well before we get onto the money piece because i think that's come up a few times and i think everyone would love to understand how you convert this to money in your bank account um what about the the posting part, the content, tags and labels on your videos and all that? Do you have a team that does that for you or did you start out doing that yourself? Because I think that's possibly also something that freaks people out that they need to spend a lot of time learning how to do that. So I, I in the beginning, because I, I think I've been clear about the fact that I was convinced I knew nothing. So in the beginning, what I did was I paid people to do it because I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Then I realized that was crap. And actually, I knew my product better than most people did. So why didn't I do it? So now it's a convenience thing. So um, I will I will do one of two things. I will either make a video and pop it up. Now, if you're running tags, I use the three by three by three formula, which I'm now not going to remember. I do three tags talking about what I talked about, three tags talking about what I do, and three tags talking about who my audience is. And I just do that. But actually, what I actually do that really helps is I go on Google and I find the most searched term for what I'm looking for, and I use it as an SEO tool. And then I put that on my video as a title, as a written title, because then when, when TikTok's scraping, it will find, the algorithm will find that title and feed it out to anyone who's made uh, that search term. Amazing. Did that all make sense? Yeah, that did, thank you. And so I the three feel like there's a lot more to dive into there, but I think that's really useful. Yeah, but I literally take yeah. it I just don't yeah. think you should get excited about it. I think you should test and test and test. So I actually only take that long. I, I will never, I mean, if you've made a video, then take five minutes 
to do a bit understanding of the of what the Google terms are you're looking at, and then put them in and tag them and keep moving. So I think you um, you need to answer this one, Peter. What if you don't want to put yourself out there to be shot down by trolls on TikTok? I've never wanted to put myself out there to be shot down by trolls on TikTok. I think being shot down by trolls sucks. Having had it happen to me a lot, I think that it's a horrendous way to live and it's unfair. And we live in a deeply misogynistic society where not only should I not be saying what I think, but if I was blonde and white, it would be more acceptable for me to say what I think. And they should all go fuck themselves because I'm not interested in that. So that's just my personal viewpoint. Um, but, you know, you can't, women are rightly, rightly, very afraid of being attacked because we are we are brought up to not put ourselves out there to, to for you know so we're brought up to be afraid to put our head above the parapet and the reason for that is because we will be attacked when we do that but what do you want to choose to live like and it's part of your business this is for, look it, it this is for work right which part of you are you going to show up as a founder, as an entrepreneur, as the runner of this account, which version of you is showing up? The version that says, I'm afraid because someone won't like me or the version that goes, how do I make more money? No, I'm not brave because I'm brave. I'm brave because I have learned the things that really, I mean, I coach on this, so it helps, but I'm brave because I've learned the things that matter to me. And the things that matter to me are that my kids eat, that I've got a we're going to school and their university, and then now some idiot wants rent and doesn't have a job, and I gave birth to all of these people. So I have to support my family. I'm the only breadwinner in my house. Now, do I care what you think is a random moron, or do I care how much money is in my bank account? I care how much money is in my bank account. And if you're going to put more money in my bank account, then I'm going to survive that. Does that make sense? Could I put it? Do you want me to put it better? No, I think. Does that does that help? I mean, I think, and also I'd be interested to know, trolls, I mean, they drive your engagement, right? Yeah, they do. They drive engagement. What they did that was a bit, fr so women on TikTok are brutal, right? You put your stuff out, fans on TikTok. When you put your stuff on TikTok and people start to attack you, the fans on TikTok will attack them for you which is phenomenal. So in my place, it was the women that went and attacked the trolls and they were like, Fuck, you know, you don't know what the hell you're talking about when you get a vagina, come back. You're not even a woman. Nobody cares what you think. It was great. So I didn't do any of that. I just stayed out of it. But then they went on to Instagram and started attacking me on Instagram. And it was really interesting because there was a place there where I was like, oh, this feels very personal because my Instagram is personal because that's where I, this is my, my last category where I show how I do my social media overview is my Instagram is me as a person and there was a place there where it got really really mean and then I thought well actually do I still know you no do I still care what you think no so what are we doing chill and then I would delete shit because I don't want it on my Instagram so if there was something I didn't like I deleted and blocked them and moved on and the people that are the meanest to you, if you click through to their accounts, they're the one, they're usually men, and they're standing there with their arm around a woman going, I love you so much, you're so beautiful. And they're the ones sitting there and attacking you. So it is what it is. Wow. You're I mean, going to succeed without someone hating you. I think, I mean, it is, a, it, it, it can be a terrifying landscape, right? Because as we all know, for for young people, social media is, is, provides this platform for bullying that just didn't exist when many of us yes, were young. It's very frightening for middle-aged women because the West does not have a lot of use for middle-aged women, you know? So there is not a place or a purpose for middle-aged women. That's another story. But I think it's quite a frightening place for middle-aged women too, because, you know, it's like, why are you here? Who cares? What are you, who's listening to you? You're just fat. I find it interesting. I don't get a lot of uh, visual comments. That's what I was expecting. You're fat and you're ugly or something. Um, and I don't get a lot of that. <clears throat> I get them attacking, attacking my intellect and my knowledge more, which is, I have no idea why that is. And I don't care. So Joanne, I hope that that gives you some answer and hopefully inspires you just to try. Um, yeah, because why would you there. not get free marketing that costs you no money? Let's be clear about this, guys. When I'm on TikTok, it doesn't cost me any money. The lady who repurposes my TikTok videos lives in Australia and cost 500 Australian dollars. That's like nothing, right? And then repurpose.io is 17 pounds and dollars a month. So my, my ROI on TikTok is huge. It's really, really huge. So on that point then, let's talk about 
the money side of it because we are talking about TikTok as a tool for business, for making sales, for converting leads. How do you use it? What's the process from posting a video to getting money landing in your bank account? So there's a couple of things that we try new things all the time, right? Just to see what does and doesn't work. Uh, one of the things that works is, so somebody said this earlier about your product in a video. If you're constantly selling your product in a video, people will stop watching you because everybody hates being sold to, right? I mean, if, if you hate it, imagine how much they hate it. So if I don't do that, I don't sell a product. I do say things like, we're happy to help you and whatever. So what we do, we have various funnels and our funnels um, are one of our most successful funnel is talking like a lot of my audience with perimenopause and stress really worry about weight loss and they can't lose weight anywhere else because it's not normal weight loss. You just, you know, you weight gain, so you can't do it. So we take them from putting up a video going, you know, are you, do you think that you can't lose weight? And is, are you struggling with the weight loss? Like one of these that has 700,000 views, I think was on something on weight loss. So we'll say, well, join us for a webinar. So we'll get people to come onto a webinar, put the sign up link in the bio, and then in theory, sell them on the webinar. What's ironic is that my diary link always gets booked solid in the launch of the webinar and almost nobody comes off the webinar as a client. But while I'm doing all the launch content and I'm buzzing and talking about it, so I give an option for people to come in, either watch or listen to something, and then they book a call with me and then I sell them into whatever I think I have that suits them. And then I don't sell people that it doesn't suit them. Let's be clear. It's not like I just, I'm not saying I want to make money because I'll sell anything to anyone because if you're unhappy, it's not going to help me. Does that make sense? And so yeah. that's one funnel. Another funnel is it'll be, a, it's, it's just standard stuff, right? It's a PDF download. Um, so you're sitting there and you're like, you're wondering what the, how do you know if you're in perimenopause here, go through here. And then they'll download that piece. And then it'll say to them, do you want to do this yourself? Or do you want my help book a call? And then there'll be a conversation that they have now. TikTok, I think I was saying to you, Michelle, TikTok is pushing me to every time TikTok gets a new feature that, that word, then <laughs> they send it to me and they force me to use it. And it's really brilliant. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to use this. I'm not 21 years old. And I have to sit there and free and learn how to use it. It annoys me so much. And no one else knows how to use it because they don't give it to everyone. Um, and so they're 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 pushing series now, but I think a series, lots of people are doing series. I don't know. They're put they're pushing those where they're like create a video series and sell them for seven to nine dollars, you know? Um, and so like the candle lady. If lots of people buy candles, what could you tell them about buying the perfect candle for them that keeps them healthy and happy and, and create, you know, content around that and then download, say, are you interested in working out how to make the healthiest candle in your house so you don't inhale toxic fumes? Here's a PDF. Give me your name and use the bio link to send them there. Download that PDF and then tell them, you know book a call with us or, or have a look at these con the, the products that you should buy that fulfill these criteria we have defined for you. That's the other thing. I predefine success for you. This is really important. I predefine success. I do not let somebody else define success for me or my clients. If you listen to anything I ever say, I will tell you what success should look like. You should not be being bullied. Doctors should not be telling you this. That, you know, people should not, your bringing personal trainer should not bloody be telling you how to eat when you're a 40 year old woman. He just shouldn't because he doesn't understand how your body works. So I tell you, here's what's wrong. Here's what's right. Here's what you're going to do. So you can, it's very proscriptive in some way. And just to go back on kind of series or things, so is that something that people would buy through TikTok? Yeah. And do they take a cut from that? No, actually they don't. They'll use it um, they, because they're, they're only, I think it's only a limited release. I wasn't paying attention. I have to record the damn thing. It's my, it's my task for tomorrow morning um, to put it up. And I'll do a seven, seven little videos on a series, six or seven series on, on stress fat and how to lose weight. Um, and, and, and do it that way. But, but um, and I don't know if anyone will buy it, but the great thing about creating that product is then I'm going to use that product and create a mini coaching program out of it. Because why, why waste the effort of making it if I don't do something else with it? 
And how does TikTok then work from a monetary perspective with your other social platforms? Because I know that you still do use Instagram, but you've worked out kind of a customer journey, so to speak, around how people are engaging with your various platforms and how that works to convert sales. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, so one of the things, um, so thank you for the question. The other thing I want to say off the back of that question is that when you find your voice in one place, you will find that you use it everywhere else, you know, because the journey for TikTok is the ruthlessness forces you to get better at everything that you're doing. So, you know, it, it, it does make a really big difference across what you're doing. So TikTok forced me to get better at who I was in Instagram, because I would just post the odd photo on Instagram. And I have a team, a, a girl that's not, no, no team. I have a girl that does it. And I friggin hate TikTok because Instagram because I don't make money. So I ignore it. Then I realized that people would go on my TikTok. Then they would go across to Instagram to check out who I was. Then they would uh, buy from me. And that was my journey. So like I came off LinkedIn because I was like, well, who cares? Because again, it's not making me money. So I didn't go there. And what I did is I stay on Instagram and LinkedIn. And then there's a part where, where my Instagram then just suddenly woke up. And I was like, oh, shit. So now if I'm on holiday, I'm on Instagram. If I go somewhere, I'm on Instagram. But Instagram is my credibility. Like if I'm on TV, I plus that on Instagram because that's my credibility matrix. And TikTok is my here's who I am and why you believe in me matrix. And so is it fair to say they might go from TikTok to your Instagram to kind of validate you, I guess, and then through your links and bio, they are then booking on for a call? No, I no, nobody needs to go as far as LinkedIn to book in a call with me. No, no, uh, on Instagram, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So anywhere you go, somebody should be telling you to book in a call with me quite quite soon it's about how many touches you have so for me we aim by the third touch someone's asking you to book in a call because okay. if you and, once or twice why are you touching if you don't want to learn more and your call pe people will pay for that call right before no, they get it no no my calls are free um but then it depends if it's a perimenopause call we'll charge you like 20 dollars to book the call just so you don't waste the slot um but generally the calls are free because um why would you charge? Why I wouldn't pay someone. Let's be reasonable. Why would you pay someone you've never met to have a conversation with them? It feels like a con. So be human across this process. Even if you're selling a product or you're selling whatever, the people who are buying for your average 40, 45 year old woman has been told about diet 15,000 million times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for you to now be telling her you're special, you're not really, are you? So let her book in a call. Don't, don't put up friction to, to, but then you have to fill out a questionnaire to come talk to me, right? And so if you're not willing to fill out the questionnaire, don't come. Well, that's, my question was going to be around kind of how do you make sure that you are, you don't have time wasters, that you're not spending hours on calls where I tell them that the call is worth this much money. Um, I can't remember what number we use because it's, it's old. So, you know, I'm like this calls, I think in those days it was 450 quid. So I was like, the calls worth 450 quid and you're going to get it for free. At that stage, someone who thinks, oh, this is too expensive is not going to go any further. All right. Okay. And then once they've had a call, they would get directed to one of your programs or courses, or they might ultimately land up working with you one-on-one, -on -one, depending on who, you know, what their issue is yes. or, and their budget. And their budget or we we just you know it's not there are people that i look at and i think you know i don't like you and this isn't going to fit you and so i don't sell to them it's really important not to sell to everybody this is where the product people are really lucky you don't care if a person buying your candle is a meanie bun and i really care if i've got to coach you i don't want to be there if you're horrible <laughs> no it's really um, i just won't do it i won't let you in so in Gauzy's, because I think we've got five minutes left. So if anyone does have any other burning questions. The is, yeah, sorry, sweetie. I just saw the question. I spoke over you. I beg your pardon. But Zoe says, if the calls are free, where's the income coming from? It's coming from them purchasing uh, a service. If it fits them. And in Gauzy's asked, she's got a new program launching at the end of Q3 or start of Q4. What would you say are the three key steps she should focus on for TikTok? as part of her launch who's going to buy why they're going to buy what they're going to get when they buy that's just marketing 101 isn't it who's going to buy it why they're going to buy it what do they get when they bought it and by the way the other thing is who are you to sell this right so 
what like if you if you're if you're struggling with whatever it is you're struggling with even with tiktok um you you'd think actually if, if this woman could just tell me what to do i'd feel better because then she'd tell me what to do and you could trust me to do that whereas you know if you're not someone that that they feel you whoever you are that's why they spend so much money spent on celebrities as brand ambassador right that, that who are you selling that? Why are you selling it? What What's it about you that makes this product special? Because the product in itself is never special, I don't think. I always think it's the reason behind the product that makes you special. So what's that reason? Is it a candle? Is it hair? Is it, what's that? And nowadays we call it story and authentic and all that. We give a lot of words for it and I don't know about that. But, but would you like me in your corner? Just answer that. Would you like me in your corner? Would you like my help? in your corner because if you would then that's the person that on tiktok you're going to follow engage speak support share and are you that person for your people i think that's really good advice and for all of us to get comfortable with that with us for ourselves first like you were saying really work out your vo your voice what you know who are you what are you trying to say um how willing are you to stand by it? So with Maddie, when she's saying um, the best engagement is videos of her, Maddie, I really feel for you. The number of times my team has said to me that if only you would get on there and I was like, I don't really know. people are going to be mean to me. I mean, let me tell you how much shit I gave my stuff, my, my people, because I wouldn't do it. But if the best engagement is videos, if I just ask her if she wants to make more money and if she does post those videos just do them when she get get her pick up the three main four main emotions that help people to buy your product give her those emotions say what do you feel about these scenarios and emotions make her life easy because i do this and i wish somebody was telling me this what are the four things that what do you tell me what you sell maddie and then i'll tell you some 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 ways to look at it how do you register tiktok on a wrong age entered in? oh i don't know i'm really sorry admin with tiktok is really not my skill set on any level um, I guess you've tried uh, TikTok support. Can you do a different version of your TikTok? Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's oh, bound to have happened to somebody else. Makeup for mature skin. Um, video, the best engagement is videos of her. I would look at what videos of her create engagement. I would look at why she thinks normal skincare is controversy, Maddie. Go with telling her why your skincare, why skincare is sold to mature women that's shit for their skin. Does that make sense? Lean into the controversy of it. And controversial is a word that is we get very girly about. Don't get girly about it. There's nothing wrong with controversy if you do it well. Controversial and trolling are two different things. But if you're saying, I make this skincare, why are you lean into it? Why are you making the skincare? You're making it because this other skincare is shit. Like I put on La Mer, I mean, I had a brand deal with Ren Skincare forever and I would keep doing it if they even just loved me enough to get, they throw makeup at me now, but um, skincare, I would do it forever because I put on La Mer and my skin dies. My skin hates that. And it's the most expensive moisturizer. Whereas Ren is natural and I'll shout about it till the cows come home. What's an MC business? Um, yeah, rebranding an MC business. Master ceremonies. Master ceremonies. Rebranding business. master ceremonies. We can give advice for running events with the experience that we have. <gasps> you can have so much fun with this. Get bad MC experiences. Make people laugh, right? I've done videos where we asked men what perimenopause was, and it was the funniest thing you've ever seen in your whole life because they had no frigging clue at all. We filmed them and put it up there. Um, but then it made women really angry, so we had to take a few of them down. So they were just, they wanted to kill people. Um, so I would talk about the, what, what's a master ceremony is for? What happens if you don't have one? What's a free for all? You know, those, those videos of those MPs in parliament trying to kill and beat each other up. Here's what happened when the master ceremonies went to the loo type thing. You know, you can, you can have a lot of fun around it, but you can also talk about how skilled a master ceremonies can be and, and how useful they can be when they're skilled, you know? So what would make people engage? Hmm. You know, I, I'm not, I, I, just to be very clear, I'm not going out there and saying, please like me, because I don't need you to like me. But you can, <laughs> I need you to, what I am saying is, do you trust me to look after you if you're in my hands? Do you trust me to tell the truth? Do you trust me to support you? Do you trust me to hold your hand through this process? And if you do those things, then, then I'm the right person for you. And if you don't, 
you should go find the place where you do feel like that. Amazing. Thank you, Gita. I think hopefully all of us have taken from this um, some inspiration around how we do really need to kind of be true to our own convictions and to our brands and our purpose, because I think it boils down to that, doesn't it? 100%. Not everybody is going to like you, your business, your purpose. It's not going to resonate with everybody. But That's why we niche and why we have specific audiences that buy our products and services. So I think that's been really, really valuable. And for me, it's been the common, clear theme that's come out of everything that we've spoken about today. Does Zoe want to ask a question? Is that why there's a hand up? Honestly, I think you should really be clear that TikTok is showing up all the holes in your marketing all the holes in your voice, all the holes in everything. Because if you're not getting engagement TikTok, maybe you're not interacting as well with the people that you, sh you, sh you want to be interacting with as you should. Does that make sense? Amazing. Well, we are at time, Gita, and I know how valuable your time is. So um, a massive, massive thank you. I hope everybody's enjoyed the session today and has taken, well, you would have had to have taken value from this because I think it's been really, really insightful. So um, we will be sending a follow-up with the link to the recording. So for those people that had to drop off or only joined toward the end, um, you'll get access to that. And Gita, I think you've also got a call to action for anyone that wants to know more about how to really drive your business through TikTok. Yeah, what we did, because we were having a conversation about this, so I put together when we were talking, I put together a four, um, a class for four weeks, plus a, a bonus kind of a thing, um, where I'm happy to, and, and Michelle will send that out with what she's doing, where if you want to join that class, I'll take a group of you through this, and you can bring your problems, and I'll help you. Now, I am not going to be your social media marketer. That's not what I care about. Okay, so let's be really clear. That's not what I want to do. But if I can help and coach you into a place where you know what you're doing, you know who you're selling to, you know why you're selling to it, and teach you how to do that, then I'm really happy to take your money for that. But I don't want to take it for becoming your marketing manager. That's not my job because that's not what I'm interested in. But to help grow your brand voice so that you get attention, I can do that in my sleep. And I'm really happy to do that. So we did this with Women's Chapter. And so there's a four-week course with a fifth week for bonus. And Michelle will send that out with a link and everything. We'll start on the first, first week of, uh, first Monday in September. And what I'll do is that if you want to come on that, I will send you all the avatar stuff, the research uh, kind of spreadsheets that you need before so that you can do those um, in prep for the first call. And so if there's a place where you feel like you're not getting anywhere, come and join us. And then at the very minimum, I'll help you create a decent platform and to find out what's not working. And I'll do it specifically for you on um, with, with a small group of us. Amazing. And I'll be there too, because um, we need to up about what well, we need to get on the TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than just up it. Well, so much luck. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. See you soon. And we will be in touch with the recording as well as any follow up information. Gita, you're amazing. Thank you so much oh, for Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys spending the time. Thank you. <laughs>